If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. If you are a regular audience member of The War Room here, live 3 to 6 p.m. Central at warroom.show, infowars.com slash show, you know that I regularly visit with Paul Nealon and that I regularly visit with Dr. Shiva Ayadure, both running for Congress here in 2018. And it was just the other day when I, I think it was last week or so when I had both of them on, and then someone had a great idea, why don't you get both of them on at the same time? So that's what we did. And now Shiva and Paul both join me now. Guys, thanks for joining me. Great to be here. Thanks for Owen. having us. All right, so this is going to be fun. Obviously, the big story right now, guys, has to be these tax cuts. The biggest cut coming to corporations, going from 35% to 21%. But there's a lot of other ripples in this deal, such as kind of a repeal of Obamacare. It's going to expose the high tax rate of states like New York and California. Uh, Shiva, let's start with you. You're out there on the East Coast. What what are you hearing right now about the tax bill? What's local media reporting? What do you think about this, Shiva Ayadi Ray? Uh, well, Owen, you know, the uh, the traditional sort of liberal establishment ob obviously will attack this tax bill, saying it, it hasn't got, uh, done enough. But one of the key things that I like about it is particularly the, the lowering of the corporate tax for a, a small businesses or LLCs. You know, typically the pass-through income on those uh, businesses, like if you're a startup uh, uh, company, you know, and you're starting your LLCs or LLPs was taxed very high, upwards of 30 uh, plus percent. And the idea is to bring that tax rate low to the big corporations tax rates. So I think that's extremely valuable because it's going to really drive innovation. It's really going to support uh, small businesses, starting up small businesses uh, and supporting their, you know, local innovation. Uh, ultimately, in, you know, in the United States, we have uh, anywhere between 15 to 20 small businesses. That's what really drive innovation and growth. The other uh, side of this is in Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren's policies, you know, which supported Dodd-Frank, actually destroyed over 1,200 community banks across this country. And community banks are really the fuel that supports small businesses. So that still needs to be addressed. And Dodd-Frank never addressed that. But I think the whole notion of really supporting small businesses is extremely favorable in this bill. Yeah, and especially even with the big corporations getting that tax cut, you know, the hope is that manufacturing comes back, more jobs come back. You know, Paul, one of your biggest campaign messages has been to cut taxes. You've been all about cutting taxes. You tweet about it yep. all the time. This has been one of your strongest points. What are your takeaways from the tax bill that got passed today? Well, I think Dr. Shiva hit really on the head of a good point. Um, Equalizing small businesses with large businesses is a very, very critical piece of it. This tax cut doesn't go far enough to motivate uh, multinationals, American corporations who have factories in China to repatriate those jobs back to the United States. That would need to be somewhere 15% or lower in order for that to happen. But Trump could fix that with a tariff. And I really strongly believe in the scaled tariff concept, which basically says if somebody is, is manipulating their currency or they're otherwise waging economic warfare against the United States, tariffs are a very useful way to do that. And the history of the Republican Party is protecting American jobs, as opposed to, let's say, NAFTA. And uh, in my book, Wage the Battle, I talk about the terribleness of Trans-Pacific Partnership. And if you look at uh, these, these huge trade deals, uh, I'll start with one. In the 1980s, we passed a free trade agreement with Israel. It's 15 pages long, roughly. And fast forward a decade, NAFTA, 1,700 pages. Fast forward two more decades, Trans-Pacific Partnership, if they had got it through, would have been 5,500 pages. And I'm glad that Senator um, Ron Johnson from Wisconsin said, I'm not going to vote for this unless they equalize small business and big business. And that was extremely important. And the reason he did that is because he's run businesses like me. I ran Fortune 500 businesses around the globe. I've shut down two Mexican factories and one Canadian factory and bought all those jobs back to the United States. And you know, those jobs are still here. Um, I've saved failing businesses. There's a business in North Carolina that was closing down in 19, uh, excuse me, in 2005. Well, and Paul, it is while still you're talking today. about this, 
while you're talking about this, and I want to hear from Shiva too, because he has experience too. Specifically though, talk about while you were starting those businesses then with the current tax structure versus what you would have been experiencing, say doing that in 2018 with the new tax structure. Well, one of the big things, uh, Owen, is now I run right now three different companies. You know, their S corps or their LLCs. All of this will basically benefit from this tax uh, structure. The key thing is, most small businesses were not hiring. We were not basically we were doing a lot of things because the, the amount of money that was being taken away from us to essentially not do uh, hire people on W twos, for example, right? Because you're not incented mm -hmm. to do that and give benefits, et cetera. This is one of the most critical things. The 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 related thing to this as a small business person is the immigration process. The American worker has been completely devastated by the policies of the liberal establishment over the last, you know, 30, 40 years, which has essentially incented people to get people in on H1Bs, which has essentially supported uh, you know, the hiring of illegal aliens. Uh, and that and and using those that group of people to support uh, votes, and that's why the Democrats really like many of the immigration sanctuary city policies, and this is concomitantly tied to stra uh, to, to tax policy is the uh, is how we deal with immigration. So uh, I think the key thing is when you really lower the tax structure for SMBs, what I call small medium businesses, you're really initiating people to start hiring. You're starting uh, to support people to start reinvesting. It really does. Re innovate, uh, you know, invigorate the economy, and that's what we really need to do because ultimately, it's innovation is what drives the economy. All the businesses that I've started, uh, Owen, they've actually come out of things that I've created, invented, you know, be it at MIT externally, and then taken to market. Being a practitioner, taking those uh, uh, products uh, to actually be used by people, and that's a very, very difficult process. One thing is to be a mad scientist, you know, inventing something. The other thing is to take those products. Hire salespeople, hire people that push your product out there. And tax policy significantly supports that. And I think to Paul's point, you know, obviously, you know, the 15 percent, you know, m many of these countries move their money abroad because the incentives they have, particularly on dividend payouts, you know, the taxes are much, much lower on when you do dividends uh, in other countries like particularly Ireland. To lower that to uh, below 15%, I think, is also the right direction or at, at that par, because that incents people to also uh, repatriate their money back. Do you concur, Paul, that this is going to ease a lot of stress on small businesses to expand? Oh, absolutely. It will absolutely do that. The, the, the question becomes, okay, this is a tax cut for businesses, and I be do believe that it will create jobs. The thing that it's not, though, is tax reform because the tax code they started with i want to say 72,000 pages it's longer and the way we know it's longer is because if it were shorter they would be telling us they would be screaming it from the mountains that look we took this from 72,000 pages down to 50,000 20,000 they did none of that it's probably 80,000 or 82,000 pages now and what you see the picture of there is Trump cutting uh, regulations from agencies. That yeah, and this is something he does. This is something he does a lot with optics, with with these regulations and stuff, where he just stacks the paper up on a desk. It's awesome. He said, "I will cut two regulations for every one new regulation." He's and it ended to up being twenty-two. 22. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's up to twenty-two to one. So, so I, and and that is in Congress. The reason Trump had to do that and the reason the administration has to do that is because Congress outsourced their role to the administration. They basically passed so many laws and so many things that give special interest money. Not, very few large corporations were paying the 39% rate. They, were, they had loopholes. And the reason they put it so high is so that you have to basically pay uh, tribute to, co to congressmen in order to get your, your loophole through. That's yeah, the it'll game be interesting again. Fight. We're about to go to break here. Again, Paul Nealon and Shiva Ayadure on with us. We're about to go to this break here. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how this does play out. I mean, will these businesses, you know, start manufacturing in America again? We'll be right back on the other side. Hard to say it's not the most wonderful time in eight years, 10 years, 20 years. I don't know. Here we are in the fight for our republic, and we have a president that is actually with us, not out to screw the country over. It's really amazing.
We are speaking right now with Paul Nealon and Dr. Shiva Ayadure. Both are going to be running for Congress in the midterm elections. Shiva running against Elizabeth Warren. Paul running against Paul Ryan. And I want to stay with uh, tax cuts here for another segment, guys. We're seeing the reaction. Well, we saw the what the Democrats were doing before the vote today, saying that, you know, it's going to kill Americans, these tax cuts, saying it's only for the rich, these tax cuts, going with the same liberal talking points. But I, I want to start with you on this one, Paul. This, to me, was a huge legislative victory for Trump today, a huge legislative victory for the Republicans today. And I think that more than anything, that's why the Democrats are so upset. They didn't want Trump to have any victories. They wanted him to go over, and he keeps having these victories. So they can't actually attack what's actually in this tax bill, and, and they really aren't. They just kind of have these very shallow arguments. I think they're just totally flabbergasted at the victories Trump is having. Well, yeah. Uh, God bless President Trump. I'm I'm thrilled. I, I do feel like this is a double Christmas with him in office. I mean, look at this thing up over my head here that one of the guys in my uh, district made for me, this Trump uh, uh, plaque. I mean, I, look, I'm thrilled with President Trump being out there and and decimating the left. These guys are attacking. They, they're calling everybody Nazis and racists and just everything under the sun. Uh, because they really have nothing, right? They're trying to run actually now on, we want more jobs and we want lower taxes and we wanna do things for, they're basically trying to co-opt Trump's platform. They, they have no good message because now they're blasting our job creating. They're saying, oh, Obama did all this and Trump's just getting the benefit of it, which is laughable. President Obama was driving this country into the ditch, into the into the sewer in the ditch. And and luckily, Trump got a hold of the wheel and we're back out on the road again. And we're seeing GDP numbers that we could only dream of during uh, both really the 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 Bush and the, the Obama presidency. So I, we are we are going up and I'm thrilled about it. Now, Shiva, you actually are going to be running against one of those Democrats that is calling foul over the tax cuts, Elizabeth Warren. What about the people in Massachusetts, though? What what has been their response to this? What are you seeing locally? Well, it's interesting to ask that, Owen. You know, this past weekend, Elizabeth Warren was speaking at Gloucester High School. It was one of her, quote unquote, open forum town meetings. So, you know, we were, you know, we're out on the ground pretty much every day. You know, I'm going to be going on the ground in a few hours. But so we went. Uh, to one of the local malls, we distributed flyers and we, uh, uh, you know, took our bus up to uh, meet Elizabeth Warren. And, you know, we gave out our flyers to about 800 people who were leaving her uh, event. And then one of the police, in fact, the police were very supportive of us because a lot of the a lot of the police are essentially Trump followers. So they said, hey, you know, you guys should go and get a picture with Elizabeth Warren. So we waited in line. And the interesting thing was right as we were about to go on the stage, she directed people not to allow us on stage. Now, what's fascinating is this was supposed to be an open forum, and I wanted to ask her some questions. One of the things during her talk was she talked she about won't how, talk to you. She won't even talk to you, talk, so you no, gotta, no, she, no. You gotta slip in at a public forum. We're her worst nightmare because the establishment Republicans in the mass GOP, and as you know, we have a fake Trumper here, these guys have no intention of winning. So I'm the only guy who actually wants to defeat her. So one of the interesting things was when she was talking to this audience of primarily a lot of quote unquote liberal drones, she was talking about how awful this tax uh, cut was. So I yelled out, hey, why don't we tax Harvard? Now here's a woman who's part of uh, Wall Street essentially because Harvard runs the largest hedge fund, uh, a $45 billion hedge fund, which she's a part of, if she benefits from, that's where a salary of $350,000 a year comes from. And yet Harvard has not paid a single dollar in tax. There's actually a bill in Congress right now, which is in fact to tax the uh, to tax uh, essentially universities and their endowments. And I'm su very supportive of that because the universities like Harvard are essentially running as a fake university, have not paid a single dollar in taxes. And they're essentially, in this case, a $45 billion hedge fund. So when you really look at someone like Elizabeth Warren and the policies, they're fundamentally hypocritical policies. Uh, I talked earlier about Dodd-Frank, which was supposed to really take away for power from big banks. It actually supported the large banks and took away power from 
uh, you know, small community banks, destroying essentially, you know, 1,200 of them. So you go on and on and on down the line, Owen, and essentially what you're looking at is a hypocrisy. And I think Trump's getting this tax cut through, you know, lowering these regulations. Every day Trump is in office, every day he gets anything through, which the liberal wing of the establishment, as well as the Republican establishment does not want, is a win for this country, and it gives us forward momentum. So that's why I uh, pointed out the small business tax cut. Obviously, there's other things that could have been done better, but that is a huge win for America. And we need to have this forward momentum for a president who is essentially fighting a massive establishment of Democrats and Republicans who do not want him to succeed at anything, including, you know, Paul Ryan up where Paul is. Yeah, and I was just going to say that, you know, because, uh, Paul, you're going to be running against Paul Ryan. It sounds to me like you want even more tax cuts. If you do get in, you'll push for even more tax cuts. Uh, but, you know, Paul Ryan, to me, I feel like he gets kind of a bailout right now with this tax cut because, you know, here's a guy who failed to get Obamacare repealed all those years he was in office. He, he didn't do anything to push Republicans into repealing Obamacare. Now Trump fits it in with this tax bill with the mandate being repealed, essentially. You don't have to pay it. Paul Ryan kind of gets a bailout here. You know, how are you going to hold his feet to the fire on this? Well, that's a great question. And the answer is it had to come out of the Senate. Paul Ryan did not stand his ground and say, in this tax cut, we are going to put in there this provision that says we're nuking the individual mandate. Paul Ryan didn't do that. He waited for the Senate to do something. And, and it really is, is disingenuous to say, well, you know, we passed this uh, bill before and the Senate didn't pass it. That's why I didn't put it in there. No, if you are carrying the torch, if you are carrying the burden for the people who elected you, then you keep going back for that fight. And, but Paul Ryan doesn't go back for that fight. Paul Ryan doesn't even have the fight. And the same thing that's going on with Dr. Shiva, and I, man, I'm telling you, I empathize with your situation. I got locked out of an event here in my district by the Republicans. They, they yeah. didn't invite me, so I paid for my own way, and they emailed me and said, we're going to refund your money because we don't want you coming. And do you know that was the best thing? Because people in the district, Republicans in the district who said, you know, I wasn't going to vote for Nealon, but now I'm going to volunteer for his campaign. They said that because, yeah, look at that, that picture you guys have up there right now. It's my uh, lovely wife and I with the governor. I mean, I was an absolute supporter of the Wisconsin GOP. I went out and campaigned for these guys, and they loved me when I was supporting them. Cassandra well, and that's the amazing part. thing to well, me about both of well, you guys. We're about to go to break here. The amazing thing to me about both of you guys is the ground game is strong. You're reaching out to the people. You're actually out with the voters. You're not too high and mighty for them. You say, I'm one of you. That's the big difference here. We're building a new media government complex here where we're deciding who gets elected. We are vetting these people. We get the guests that are going to be elected to the next Congress. We get the guests that are willing to come on here and say the things that need to be said because they're brave and because they're patriots. And we hope with your support, you spread these names, you spread these videos, you spread these links, you spread their campaign sites so that we can get a Congress elected that is going to back Trump's agenda and is going to have real talk, real discussions on real issues in this country. And so with that, I go back to Paul Nealon and Shiva Ayadure. Guys, there was one thing I noticed today while you had all those congressmen and President Trump out on the Hill celebrating the tax bill, there felt like a lot of camaraderie, like a lot of patriots that had been in there really trying to fight for this country, but have never really been able to, to get one in, have never really been able to make the buzzer beating shot. And it felt like a lot of them felt that way today with the Tim Scott speech and all the others. I feel like there's a new wave coming. This was actually this was actually your guys' idea to do this joint interview, to have both of you guys on at the same time. Are you kind of seeing now that there's a camaraderie up and coming with the people that are trying to get into Congress in 2018 to drain the swamp, uh, like other members that have been on the show? You know, um, we've got Carla Spaulding down in Florida. I mean, is there a camaraderie? I'll go to Shiva first. Are you seeing this, you know, not with just Paul Nealon here, but are you reaching out to other people that are running for Congress right now, too? Yeah, I, I think, Owen, what's happening is within Massachusetts and externally, there's a growth uh, that's explosively growing of this new idea that we need to have a new American revolution. Uh, Trump, President Trump's win 
uh, was extremely important, of, of immense historic value, because what it did was he essentially was a new shot, which I've said before, that was shot like in Lexington, which essentially was a necessary disruption, which has enabled people like Paul and I and others to start coming together. People actually work for a living, like like the president and others. Uh, I, I think Paul's an engineer. I'm an engineer. People have actually produced stuff, created businesses. Uh, and that was really the intention of the founders of this country. It was supposed to be everyday people participate and then they go back to work. And that uh, that feeling has been uh, extremely uh, productive in the camaraderie that's building not only among uh, people like Paul and myself and others, but a whole bunch of people are now expressing interest in wanting to actually participate in governance. You know, our campaign is fundamentally founded on the notion of declare your independence. Um, like Paul, you know, we attempted to work with the mass GOP, but they have no intention of defeating Elizabeth Warren. They work in collusion with her. They're essentially two wings of the same establishment. So our campaign for declare your independence is really uh, like a dog whistle that's really waking up people. There's 2.3 million independents in Massachusetts who've always had to choose the lesser of two evils. And that notion of choosing the lesser of two evils uh, with uh, President Trump's win is literally galvanizing a whole set of people to say, look, I don't need to choose the lesser of two evils. I'm going to choose the right person. Forget which party that they're labeled on. I'm going to look at really at their policies and the rational talk that they do. And that uh, that's really what's going on, Owen. And it's a very, very exciting uh, uh, you know, for example, we've exposed uh, Elizabeth Warren on the Monsanto issue. You know, typically that's a lefty issue, but we have all of these people who are saying, wait a minute, here's a woman who's, who claims that she's against evil corporations, yet she supported the Monsanto Protection Act, voted for it, and we expose that at a very deep level. So that flips. And then you also, don't, don't sell yourself short here, you also got her a Christmas gift, the Monsanto Death Star. You literally bought a star yeah, for we, Elizabeth we said, Warren. Yeah, it's, it's the, it's it's the Monsanto in. Death Star. But, but do you think that's the biggest difference here, Paul, is the big difference that these new American patriot candidates are not going to the GOP to get into office. They're not going to the establishment. They're not going to the big donors. They're going to the people. They're running ground campaigns. Is that the difference here, Paul? Yeah, that's a great meme you just put up there. I'm sorry. I can't put, put, put the put the put <laughs> the there it is. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, Pocahontas <laughs> to the power of two. And, and, you know, this woman gets away acting as though she's the fighter against big corporations. One of the things is when we started attacking her over and over again, Monsanto, finally she gives a speech a week ago claiming she's against the Monsanto Bayer merger. And Tom Fieldpot at the pro Democratic, you know, Mother Jones. Uh, then gives her mm. coverage, acting as though she's a fighter. And this is how these guys work. They seek to co-opt the real fighters, like Paul and I and others, with fake fighters like Elizabeth Warren. And that's the real fight here, to continually expose them at every step of the way. And that's what we're going to be doing. And that's what gets really exciting. And I think people are ready for that, Owen. And the people are seeing it where you're coming from, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, you know, the, the very interesting thing here is... Um, Dr. Sheba's uh, as close to a brother as as I could have, right? From from another mother. I mean, the guy is for lower taxes. He's suggesting I'm gonna have I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna tax uh, a fake hedge fund, also mislabeled as a university. Um, the second half of that is he wants to reduce total taxes, which none of this tax reform actually did. They didn't cut spending anywhere. The federal government is seven times bigger, seven times bigger than when FDR was president. You mean to tell me they couldn't find anywhere to cut? It's absurd. President Trump has suggested places to cut. He suggested cutting money to the, the State Department. They didn't want to cut money to the State Department. Look, uh, so an engineer like Shiva, like myself, like, like um, Peter Thiel, like other folks who have created uh, wealth, and created new things are, are hugely positive for this country. It doesn't matter that his color is not the same as my color and maybe his religion's not the same as my religion. But I'll tell you what, I am not going to, I, I'm not going to not go after somebody because their color's different or their religion's different. If they are going against America first, I'm gonna go after them. And, and the big thing here is, it's time to, you know what, you want to drain the swap, it's time to stop electing career politicians. And that's why you exactly. two are the big difference Amen. here. You're not career politicians. Final segment on the other side, don't go anywhere. 
final segment here of the War Room. Merry Christmas to you and your loved ones from everybody here at InfoWars. Final segment here with Dr. Shiva Ayadure and Paul Nealon, both trying to make Congress great again in 2018. We're going to get some final thoughts on uh, some other subjects that they want to talk about. I know that Dr. Shiva is about to talk a little bit about net neutrality, uh, just kind of in the range of that subject is this story today. Facebook giving the U.S. government more and more data, and it basically breaks it down. Now, this is no secret. It's just amazing to me how they freak out about this net neutrality repealment, which they couldn't tell you any differences between the Internet today and when net neutrality was still in place. But they don't care that Facebook basically sells all their data or that Facebook, you know, censors people like Paul Nealon from posting. Uh, those are separate issues. But um, Shiva, what, what uh, is on your mind today about net neutrality? Yeah, I, I think, Owen, let me just take one step back. Um, I, I think the key things that are driving this campaign, our campaign, I think very similar to Paul's, is a notion of decentralization of power. You know, there are sort of four eyes that drive our campaign, you know, innovation, integrity, integration, and independence, declare your independence. And those four things are really about decentralizing power away from what, you know, uh, President Eisenhower and later on Senator Fulbright called the military industrial academic complex. Where I'm located here, you know, right now in Cambridge, the sewer that feeds Washington literally is Harvard University. And what I mean by that, if you look at Massachusetts, uh, worse, rated one of the worst in corruption, worst in public infrastructure, three times the national uh, average in opioid addiction. And that's brought to you by Mitt Romney, uh, Charlie Baker, both Republicans, establishment Republicans, and Elizabeth Warren, an establishment Democrat. All of these people come out of Harvard. Again, as we, we shared earlier, Harvard gets away without paying a single dollar in tax. Yet these are the people that talk about centralizing power. They're the ones who supported Romney Care and Obamacare. So what we really need to understand is these are the people who are the twin heads of the establishment. So I wanted to give you that background, Owen, because from that background, we can look at net neutrality. What's fascinating about net neutrality is the following. Over the last year, we've had essentially a ruse, a distraction, uh, to put all the attention on the telcos. Look, the telcos actually have some level of competition, at least, and they're you know the pipe that lets a content developer reach the consumer. But the what's fascinating is the insidious nature of this entire discussion that took place is the real evil people, the real people who are against net neutrality are Google and Facebook. All right, and they're the ones who have acted as though they're the supporters for net neutrality. And they've promoted this whole thing to attack the telcos while they hide behind the fact they're the ones who control the gateway to in fact even get on, you know, onto the pipe. So, you know, uh, 1993 when I started one of my first businesses, you know, you built your local website, you had your local telco and you put it on. Well, nowadays, all your content essentially on social media Facebook has monopolized. Similarly, on Google owns the search engines, they own the index, they manipulate all of that. Both of these guys are the real criminals that do not want net neutrality. And as a deflection, they went after you know the FCC's uh, quote unquote protection of uh, telcos. That's really not the issue. The telcos actually do compete, but there's really no competitor to Google and there's really no competitor to Facebook. So my issue is Google needs to be busted up. And I'm gonna give a talk tomorrow on details of net neutrality. But this is the not so obvious establishment. Google and Facebook are really uh, the the main uh, tip of the spear of the establishment, how they control content. And if you look at what Google wants to do, they want to do Google Fi right now. So they want to vertically integrate Owen. So they want to own. Um, oh, the vertical ways integration. Uh -huh. That's what they want to do. They want to vertically integrate. So the telcos were really their competition. Right. So they put chains around the telcos while they had a free reign to do what they wanted. And because the people in Congress are not engineers, they don't understand what a search index is. They're able to pull the well, wool what do over you their know? Whoa, 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 whoa. What does Dr. Shiva Ayadi Ray know? I mean, it's not like he invented email or something. I mean, come on, give me a break here. But, Paul, you've actually I mean, Paul got censored on Facebook. You know, Paul gets no love from the GOP. I don't know if you want to respond to uh, to what Shiva was just talking about here, Paul. We got five minutes left. If there's something else yeah. on your mind here, yeah. uh, what what do you want to close us out with? Two things, two things that are really important, and and they attach and they attach to what Shiva said. So we have to build a wall. Let's just start right there. We've got to build a wall because 
If you think of how a plumber treats a broken pipe anywhere, they don't grab the mop. And that is essentially what we're doing with opioid addiction in this country. We're suggesting that we can treat all of these people who are being addicted to opioids. Meanwhile, the southern border is wide open. If you look at the 20, 2016 uh, DEA report on where all of the opioids are coming from, the illegal opioids, they're coming across the southern border. We have got to fix the broken pipe. We've got, and that's only one of the two pipes that's broken, or one of the many pipes, is having a porous border. The other is the illegal uh, manufacturing and selling of opioids. They are, I, we believe that they are intentionally losing opioids to uh, theft. And so they, we are getting prescription opioids on the street when they shouldn't be on the street. And, and this is an entire insurance scam. But that goes back to, that goes back to what well, you and by the way, not, not, I'm not meaning to interrupt you, but this goes this, this this is very key to what you're talking about. There's also a program where the government buys back pharmaceutical pills, so they have no concern. They can sell all these pills, they don't buy them, sell them, just get them all out there, and then at the end of the day, they never take a hit because everyone still buys them, and then the government buys them back from the consumer that doesn't use them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I and think Conca I'm sorry, Paul. Concomitant oh, with that right. is you also have the solution that's being promoted for the opioid addiction is methadone. Um, Mitt Romney aggregated a bunch of methadone clinics at about 715 million and then flipped them shortly that thereafter for $1.2 billion. So methadone is also not the solution. And you also can look at the other problem is that if you look at the correlation between opioid addiction and the loss of manufacturing jobs in the United States, they're essentially linked because the depression and all the different problems that got caused by that is also linked. Steve Bannon has talked about this. And one of the things is, uh, as Paula said, you gotta have strong borders. Uh, every human cell has a border around it. Um, so mm -hmm. anyone who studies biology knows that you have to have strong borders. So but our the cells other are racist. Oh my gosh, Shiva Ayodhya Ray, cells are racist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think the other thing is that we have to increase the manufacturing jobs in this country. We have to bring jobs back home. When you don't have jobs, you create to, you create these problems also. And that's it. Yeah, and I think that's why Trump thinks bringing these jobs back will help so many of these issues. People will get to work. They'll start making more money. And, and going back to the border wall for a second, Paul, I think you're kind of actually hitting on an angle here that I haven't really thought of as far as the wall construction is kind of getting away from the immigration angle and saying, hey, look, people are just literally carrying burlap sacks of drugs across our border. You know, that that is, a, that is a great point. Well, they are. And the last thing that I want to touch on is the, the talk has really been around the, the um, net neutrality. And I started white knighting free speech because we have seen so many people be throw off, thrown off of the de facto public square that I believe we need to have a one law, one law that says you cannot censor lawful speech on major social media outlets. And what that would do, you know, this is different than if you send a letter to the editor and they pick the best letters for whatever reason, whatever their criteria is, you are self-publishing on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. And when they demonetize you or they throttle you or they stifle your speech, uh, if you look on my Twitter feed, I, I put out a video and I put out a media release that said, here's how this law should work. And it's very, it's very unobtrusive. And I think that anybody who argues against this, in fact, I'm gonna blow the Libertarian Party to smithereens with this because they are suggesting that, well, they, they use the ma free, ma, ma private business uh, meme. Right. When in fact, if you look at, there are so many businesses that are already regulated. In fact, I, I've got an oxygen sensor to put on my truck here in a few minutes. Um, not in this outfit, Yeah, you by can't the way. even build a warehouse without having to meet a bunch of regulations. No, you, 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 have, you have hard hats out in, in construction sites. You have all sorts of regulations on food and beverage 
manufacturers. And well, I'll so, tell you what, Paul, we got to take a break here, but I yeah. think that the big link in that case is what they did to Gab. As soon as they erased Gab from the marketplace, I think that that's when the case really got hot. Dr. Shiva Ayudire running against Dr. Shiva Ayudire running against the fake Indian. Paul Nealon running against Paul Ryan, the swamp creature. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. That's that's great stuff, guys. This is how we're going to make Congress great again. Stop electing career politicians. That does it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. You stay classy, Info Warriors.